What's up guys, Ken also known as Volshai here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Easy DIY Fab's RGB heat spreader RAM kit so you can convert your old DDR2, 3 or 4 memory into RGB goodness. And we're going to open up the bigger kit which comes with an RF remote. So I'll be using this kit in a CPU or rather a computer that has a CPU of an older generation. So it's a 4790K on a Z97 motherboard. Unfortunately, back in the days of those motherboards and CPUs, we didn't have RGB RAM or RGB headers on our, our motherboards. So I'm going to be using an RF remote in this uh, build for my computer. So right here we have the RF remote right up in front and center, so I'm going to open this up actually. So we have the remote itself, and uh, it looks like we have a bunch of modes, so I'm guessing that's mode speed, brightness, uh, we can set it to auto off on, we can turn it off and on. Uh, it's got, looks like it's got color presets here. Now the uh, color scheme that I've got in my computer is red and black, so I'll probably be setting these to red, so that's easy for me, uh, it's easy enough to set. So we got most of the colors that everyone's gonna probably want. We got, um, it looks like a dark blue, a purple, green, a few oranges, a yellow, uh, kind of a paler orange, uh, blue, green, pink, so we got all the colors that most people are going to use. Again, these are addressable, so you can change it to any color that you want. Uh, but again, since I don't have an addressable pin header on my motherboard, I cannot do that. So I'm stuck with the remote, which is okay with me. So we're gonna toss that off to the side and we're just gonna look at the uh, power adapter here. So unfortunately, the power adapter is a Molex adapter. I hate Molex. And um, I've actually ordered a Molex to SATA power adapter from Newegg. And you don't have to worry about any power differences between Molex and SATA because uh, Molex and SATA actually have the same power delivery. It's either five volts or 12 volts, I believe. And SATA has the ability to deliver 3.3 volts, five volts and 12 volts. So you don't have to worry about um, putting too much power into these by switching that over using an adapter because uh, I really don't like Molex cables and I don't want to, um, don't want to use them in my build. And we, it looks like we also have the RF receiver here, the infrared receiver. It's uh, heat shrinked in between the two cables here. So we're gonna throw that off to the side too. And we're gonna have a look at the red heat spreaders. I'm actually really excited to have a look at these. I haven't had a look at them in person yet. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm, I'm digging those. I'm very glad I went with the red ones. I believe we were zip tied here together. <laughs> we are. So we'll just have a look at the one. So these are the red heat spreaders again. LED diffusion bar at the top here for the LEDs. Uh, we also have the three pin headers or the adapter cables here. And we also have uh, male and female ends so you can daisy train the, chain them as I said earlier. And we got the same things again, thermal pads, uh, conversion cable for gigabyte motherboard. So we are good to go on that front. So I'm just gonna clear this off here and we're going to get into installing uh, the thermal pads on the uh, new heat spreaders that I have here. Okay, so I just quickly did one by myself just to learn the process of putting this together. I actually took the sticker off of the stick of RAM that I had in the package. So this is the identical looking one. So I took the sticker off and I put it over top of the Easy Fab logo. So you don't see uh, the Easy Fab logo when you have the RAM inserted into your motherboard. And it looks a little bit more clean that way. So you don't have the, uh, you know, kind of ugly looking branding here. I wish they made that smaller, or at least they would use the um, kind of like a bowl logo that they got going on on the front of the box over here. Like example, if they used that, that would have been sweet. That would have been way better. But they used this kind of ugly font and I'm not that big of a fan of it. So as I said, I just quickly did that one. And I'm gonna quickly walk you guys through the steps of doing my second stick of RAM. So I'm going to quickly open up this stick of RAM here. Okay, so now that I have the second piece of RAM out of its package, we're going to just push the finished one off to the side here. And we're going to take a look at the second one. Now, what you wanna do is you want to grab the package with the uh, thermal pads in it. Uh, we will not be using the EVA foam that is also behind here. Uh, that is for low profile RAM that needs to have the extra thickness because there's no chips on both sides of low profile RAM for the most part. So if you don't have chips along here on both sides right here, then you're probably gonna to need to use that foam to add an extra thickness to the RAM so it will make contact with the heat spreader. So we're just going to open this bag up here real quick. 
So we got the EVA foam. We're not going to be using that. We got the two thermal pads that we'll be putting across the chips on the RAM. And we also have the plastic risers right here in the package. I won't be using those again. Those are used for low profile RAM. And we have an additional screw in the package there as well, in case you lose a screw out of the heat spreader at any time in the future. So I'm gonna first take the sticker off the RAM. You gotta be careful with taking these stickers off the sticks of RAM in case uh, you don't wanna rip them, obviously. Uh, it's also nice to have the uh, information of the RAM on the outside of the heat spreader on the new ones. Uh, because it tells you the model number of the uh, stick of RAM, um, DDR3, 4, 2, whatever you want to use, uh, the megahertz, the uh, cast latency, the timings, the voltage, how big the piece of RAM is, and so on and so forth. So this is a good thing to have and keep around in case you ever want to sell them in the future and you want to show people what uh, model are actually underneath this heat spreader here. So we're going to begin by taking the screws off of the uh, heat spreaders here. There's only screws, two screws on each side. So we're gonna quickly take the screws out of the heat spreaders. And we can lift the cover off here. So now what we wanna do is we want to take the uh, sticker off the piece of RAM that you want to uh, convert over to the RGB ones. So you wanna be very careful. You wanna take extreme caution, make sure you don't rip these. These tend to have a paperback sticker on them uh, and they can easily be ripped if you don't take care when taking them off. So I'm just going to take my time here with taking this off. It might take me a few minutes to do so. That's all right. As long as we can get it off in one piece, I'll be happy. Retain as much adhesive on it as possible. Try not to get my fingerprint oil all over it. Okay, so I just got the sticker off of the RAM. So that's all we have right there. So we're going to put the RAM just down for a second. We're going to take the front plate of the RAM. I'm just gonna just fit it back on here so I have a, a flat surface to put the sticker back on. So I'm not messing it up here. And we're just going to stick it over top of the EasyFab logo here. I'm not such a big fan of the logo. So I'm just gonna cover it up here. I'm gonna try to make this as straight as possible. There we go. There we go. Now it looks a little bit more professional with the RAM. It looks more clean, I would say, than the ugly logo that was there before. So we're going to take that heat spreader part off and we're going to start installing the thermal pads on the uh, chips of RAM here. So again, my RAM has two chip sides, or has chips on both sides, I should say. And we're going to use two pads of thermal pads here without the EVA foam. So we're gonna throw that off to the side. We won't be using that today in this video. So we're going to start by taking the protective film off of the thermal pads. And these are very easy to rip. I actually ripped the thermal pad that was on this one just a little bit, not too bad to the point where it's not usable. So you wanna be very careful with taking these off because you can rip these very easily. So we're just going to take the ram stick here and we're just going to lay the thermal pad across the chips on the uh, stick of RAM here. And we're gonna flip the piece of RAM over and we're going to put the other thermal pad on the other side. Okay, now once you have the thermal pads on both sides of the uh, chips on the RAM, you just wanna give a little bit of pressure just to make sure it makes good contact with the chips and then we're gonna take the film on the other sides of the piece of RAM off. And then we're going to press it with a little bit of pressure onto the heat spreaders. And then we're going to put the original plate back on. We're gonna put, again, a little bit of pressure on there so it makes good contact with the chips and the thermal pads. So this is the part where I ripped a little bit of a corner off here on the other one that I previously did myself just to learn the steps. So what you wanna do is you wanna be very careful when taking the the backing off of the thermal pads here. I found it's a good idea to get it started. See if I can get the thermal pad off here. Sometimes it can be a pain here. So to get it started, and then as you're going along, press down with your thumb. Just slowly at a time like so. So it makes good contact with the chips and you're not ripping the thermal pad at the same time. Because I didn't put my thumb across down as I was pulling this off last time. 
And then I ended up ripping the thermal pad, which is no good. There we go. So that side is good to go, and we're going to flip it over and do the same side. Okay, so now that we have the protective film off of both sides of the RAM, now you want to be careful of which way that you put the RAM. So on DDR3, the notch that is a, a shorter notch rather on the DDR3 is actually uh, towards this way, like so. You don't want to put them in backwards uh, because this cable will be facing towards the bottom of the motherboard right here. And you want obviously to make that cable edge uh, nice. Or if your case, for example, has better routing for cable cables that way you might want to have this cable facing down however i want this cable to be facing upwards like in my case so i can run it through the cable routing grommets that are on my case and make it look neat so i'm going to install it with the uh, shortest notch on the right so i'm going to just line up the chip here with the edge of the heat spreaders here Make sure it's even on both sides, the length. Okay, now we're going to take the plate and we're going to put it on top of the uh, stick of RAM. And we're going to apply a little bit of pressure, not too much, you don't want to um, damage the RAM at all with too much pressure, obviously. And we're just gonna make sure that everything is lined up, looking good. Then we're going to apply a little bit of pressure onto the uh, stick of RAM here. I'm going to flip it over to the other side, and I'm also going to apply some even pressure there too. Just to get good contact with the thermal pads, we want to make sure that our RAM is nice and cool when using these. And then the last step of this is just putting the two screws inside the heatsink. And then we're ready to go. I'm going to uh, then pop them in the computer with the RF remote, and we're going to have a look at what the sticks of RAM look like in action. So I, before I go into... Uh, putting these RAM sticks inside my computer. I'm just gonna go over the RF remote real quick in case you are using a kit that has the RF remote and you aren't using the addressable RGB pins on your motherboard. So again, I'm using an older motherboard with DDR3, which does not have the uh, three pin addressable header or a four pin addressable header. But in this case, again, it's five volts, which is three, three pins. So only five volts, no 12 volts. So on the end of this, it has a male uh, three pin header on the uh, RF controller by the looks of it. And then it's powered by a Molex connector. Again, I won't be connecting it to Molex. I'll be using a SATA power cable uh, because I don't want to run a Molex cable just for this in my case. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug both of these into each other and we're going to daisy chain one to another. So they communicate with each other with the exact same colors at the exact same time. Just going to get the zip ties off of the cable right here. So the female um, end of the adapter, I believe, is the daisy chain one. So we're going to plug this into here, like so. Plug the female and male end to each other of both RAM sticks. Leaving the female end on the first RAM stick that we're going to use, this, this will go into the RF remote. So we're going to plug the RF remote into that. And this is essentially what the, the setup is going to look like with all this cables. We'll find a good way to cable manage it. I'm not sure if you can cha daisy chain three or four together. I imagine you could, um, but I haven't tested that. But I do have the uh, other two black ones, so we might test that at the end of the video uh, to see if we can daisy chain those to uh, four RAM sticks instead of just two. So with that hooked up, we're now going to uh, put these inside my computer and see how they run. Okay, so I have my computer open here, and as you can see, like I said earlier, it's a red and black color scheme. So I've taken the RAM out of the computer, so these are the original ones with the original heat spreaders. Uh, it's the Ripjaw X, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. The uh, sticks of RAM that I bought have the exact same uh, specs on them, so we don't have to worry about that affecting our performance. So I'm going to take the uh, new sticks of RAM here, and we're going to put them into the slots on our motherboard. So I'm going to quickly just slot them in here. There we go. 
and I'm going to have the RGB cables just dangling out of the top for it for now. And I will cable manage uh, the cables once I open up the back panel, once I stand the computer up. Okay, so now that I put the RAM inside the computer, all we have is the uh, four or three pin, I should say, three pin RGB header cables uh, just dangling out of the top of the RAM. So I'm going to uh, route it behind my water cooler that's up here so you don't see any of the cables. And then we're going to open up the back panel and then I'm gonna wire up the RF remote and we're gonna go from there. Before hooking everything up, I plugged in the SATA power and Molex power adapter that I bought on Newegg that I mentioned earlier, so I don't have to use a Molex cable in my computer. With the SATA power and Molex power adapter plugged into the RF remote receiver, it was just a matter of feeding the uh, RGB three pin cables through a rubber grommet up by my water cooler in my case. With the wires fed through my case, all I did was plug in the RAM sticks together to daisy chain them, and then I plugged in the power adapter to a free SATA power plug that I had on my computer, and I just kind of stuffed the cables somewhere just for the time being, just to uh, see if it would work. After that, it was just a matter of putting the back panel back onto my PC case. And voila, it actually worked really well. And I decided to try out the remote here and there's so many different kinds of modes and lighting patterns that you can choose with this uh, RGB RAM stick modification that it's pretty insane. However, I'll just be using a solid red color inside the interior of my computer. Now, to be quite honest, these RAM sticks aren't quite as high quality as say Trident Z RGB memory sticks in terms of the RGB quality. Now there are a few RGB hotspots that you may be able to see depending on what the brightness you set for these RAM sticks are. But for $18 on Amazon, you really can't ask for more from these RAM sticks. As a quick test, I plugged in the other kit that I bought and I can confirm that you can use up to four RAM sticks at the same time with the daisy chain cables. If you're looking to add some flair into your old PC build or if you're just wanting to upgrade your DDR4 RAM sticks that don't have a heat spreader, I highly recommend these addressable RGB RAM heat sinks. All right, so I want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. My name is Ken Olson, known as Wiltshire, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.